In this lesson, we would like to review how we solve linear inequalities, and we're going to get to absolute value inequalities um, in this lesson if time permits. What I want to do is uh, review how we write our solutions or how we can present our solutions to inequalities. Remember, inequalities um, involve, linear inequalities involve um, more than one solution. For instance, in this ex first example here where it says to graph the following inequality and write the solution in, inter in interval notation, I have x is greater than or equal to 2. Well, if you really think about it, there's a lot of numbers that are greater than or equal to 2, so it's kind of hard to write out all of our solutions. So we come up with two ways. One way is to draw a number line, plot your solution on a number line, and the other way is to write your answer in interval notation. If I were to write my answer or plot my answer on the number line, I go to 2 on my number line. And since this is an equal to sign, anytime I have an equality uh, equal to with my inequality, I'm going to use a closed circle. Okay? So equal to means closed circle when I graph on the number line. And the rest of my graphing is just going to be shading. X is greater than or equal to 2. Numbers that are greater than or equal to 2 are numbers like 3, 4, 5. They're numbers to the right of 2. So on my number line, when I graph it and I show my solution, I'm going to shade to the right. Now, to write my number, my solution in interval notation, all right, I always move from left to right, and I want to know where my shaded region is. So from left to right, my shading region starts at x equals 2. So I'm going to write my 2. And my shaded region continues indefinitely to the right. When that happens, I have infinity. Whenever I have infinity, I'm always going to put a parentheses. All right? Around infinity and negative infinity is always a parentheses. Okay, here around two, I'm either going to have a square bracket or a parenthesis. All right, since I have a closed circle here and this equal sign here, I'm going to use a bracket. All right, that means include that number as part of my solution. So two to infinity is my solution presented in interval notation. Let's go to the part B. X is less than 4. All right. In this example, there is no equal sign. All right. And therefore, when I graph, I need to use an open circle. So my graph is going to be open. And values that are less than 4 are like 3, 2, 1, 0. And those are to the left. So I'm going to shade to the left. All right. And as I write my interval notation, all right, I always start from left to right. From the left, uh, if I extend indefinitely from the left, it's negative infinity. And my interval goes until I get to, this was 4. I always put a, always going to be a parenthesis here. But 4 is either going to be a square bracket or a parenthesis. Since I have an open circle here and I have no equal sign, I'm going to have to put a parenthesis. All right? So my interval is negative 4, negative infinity to 4, and I don't include 4. All right? So these are all the numbers that satisfy this inequality here. And for this one here, we have that inequality being satisfied. All right, this is how we present our answers. Let's actually get to solving some inequalities. Solving linear, in, linear inequalities is very similar to solving um, linear equations. We're going to go through the same set of processes. The only difference here is that if I multiply or divide by a negative number, I have to switch my inequality. Now, the reason why I have to do that is because, for instance, we know, for instance, that 1 is less than 2. That is a fact. We know that 1 is less than 2. But if I, let's say if I divide both sides by a negative 1, then I get negative 1 is less than negative 2, which is false. All right? Negative 1 is actually bigger. It's, it's, it's more to the right on our number line than 
I am so sorry here, is more to the right on our number line than negative 2. So in order for this to be a true statement, I can't write keep this less than symbol. I, had, I have to erase it and change it to a greater than symbol, and now it becomes true. All right? So we have to remember, if we multiply or divide by a negative, switch to inequality symbol. Let's get to solving some of these inequality, linear inequalities. As always, I'm going to express the, my solution on the number line, and I'm going to write it in interval notation when I have my solution. Let's look at this example here. 2x plus 7 is greater than negative 11. All right? Well, the first thing I do is subtract 7 from both sides. I get that 2x is greater than negative 18. I can divide, I'm sorry, I can divide both sides by 2. And I'll get that x is greater than negative 9. Notice I divide it by a positive 2 and not a negative 2, so I do not have to switch my inequality symbol. If I graph my solution on the number line, I'm going to zoom in where negative 2 is in the, number, in the middle of my number line instead of writing all those tick marks. And since I don't have an equal sign here, I'm going to use an open circle. And numbers that are greater than negative 9 are to the right. And so I'm going to shade over here to the right. Now, drawing your solution on the number line really helps with your interval notation because if I write it in interval notation, I'll see that my solution from left to right begins at negative 9 and continues indefinitely to the right. Always put a parenthesis around infinity. And at negative 9, since I have an open circle and I have no equal sign, and I'm also going to have to put a parenthesis there. All right, let's go to part B here. I have 5 minus 2x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Well, I need to isolate this x. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 10. And then I can divide both sides by a negative 2. Uh-oh, I'm divided by a negative, so I have to switch my inequality symbol. And so I get that x is less than or equal to positive 5. I'm now at a point where I can draw my number line. I'm going to zoom in where 5 is at the middle of my number line instead of drawing all of my other numbers. And now at 5, since I have an equal sign, I'm going to use a closed circle. And numbers that are less than 5 are to the left. And so I'm going to shade in that direction. And going from left to right for my interval notation, I'm extending indefinitely to the left, so I'm going to have a negative infinity. And my solution ends at 5. I always put a parenthesis around infinity. And since I have a closed circle, that means I'm including this point and that equal sign there, I have to use brackets around that 5. Okay. So again, it's very similar to graphing uh, our, our not graphing, but solving linear equations, we have to remember that less than or greater than gets switched if I divide or multiply by a negative. Let's talk about what we call uh, compound inequalities. A compound inequality is an inequality that has, a, that has basically more than one inequality, all right? Inequality statements that have more than one inequality. Um, I have an example of one below. All right, we have negative 13 is less than 3x plus 2 is less than 8. All right, so I got my variable kind of between, my variable expression kind of between two uh, integers there. Okay, it creates three parts, and this is one type of uh, compound inequality. And there's another type. If I look at this, I want to get x completely by itself. For me to do that, I've got to isolate it. I've got to do what I normally would do, right? What I normally would do is subtract 2, right? But in order to keep this inequality balanced, I've got to subtract 2 from each piece. So there's three pieces here. So I'm going to have to subtract 2 from each piece. So I get this equation here, all right, this compound inequality here. Now, my x is still not isolated. I've got to divide everything by 3. It is a positive 3, so I don't have to worry about changing any signs. So I get negative 5 is less than x. 
is less than two. And I've got to be careful here when I draw my number line and write everything in interval notation. All right, and I'm actually going to draw my numbers here since I'm going to be between uh, some numbers. All right, I think that's good enough, right? This piece right here is saying that x is less, or negative 5 is less than x. If you're not comfortable with it looking like that, it's the same thing as x is greater than negative 5, right? I'm opening towards the x here. And so that's saying that x is greater than negative 5. It is not an equal sign, so I need to put an open circle. And numbers that are greater, I'm going to put an arrow there to the right. Okay, I'm going to put an arrow because it can get a little messy here. All right, now if I go to this piece, this second piece, let's use another color here. x is less than 2. Well, that looks normal, right? 2, put an open circle, and I need to shade to the left. My solution is where these two things actually are going to intersect. And so it's going to include all of these points that are between negative 5 and 2, but don't include negative 5 and 2. And so if I write my answer in uh, interval notation, my interval starts very close to negative 5. So I'm going to use negative 5 here. And it continues until I get to 2. Notice I have these open circles here. I don't have equal signs here. So I get negative 5 to 2. And let me erase this so you won't think that's a negative. I'm showing you how that opened. But that's one type of uh, compound inequality that we use to solve um, with these linear inequalities. Let's look at the second type. And the second type is one that's separated by an or. We have x plus 3 is less than negative 3 or 2x plus 6 is greater than or equal to uh, 14. Again, this is a compound inequality statement because it is two statements. They're just two inequality statements. They're just separated by or. So I'm going to solve both of them. But when I solve them both, I'm going to have to graph them both on the same number line. So let's do that. I can subtract 3 from both sides. I'll get that x is less than negative 6. All right, and I'm going to go ahead over here and solve this one. I get 2x is greater than or equal to 8. I can divide both sides by 2. And I'll get that x is greater than or equal to 4. So when I draw my solution here, draw my number line, All right, negative 6, I'm going to have an open circle, and it's less than, uh, x is less than negative 6. Those numbers are to the left. x is greater than or equal to 4, I'm going to have a closed circle. Numbers that are greater than or equal to 4 are to the right. So this time they don't intersect, so I still have to shade my solutions here. And there's my solutions, all right? From left to right, I'm extending indefinitely from the left, so I have ne negative infinity. And I continue all the way up till I get to negative 6. All right. Now, infinity, I always put a parenthesis. And that's negative infinity. And at negative 6, I have an open circle. I don't have an equal sign, so I have to use a parenthesis. Now, I'm going to leave a little space between these right here, and then I'm going to write my other interval. It starts at 4, so I don't use any of these numbers here. And it continues until I go to infinity. I always put a parenthesis around uh, infinity. And with 4, I need a closed bracket. All right, because I include this. Now, when I have more than one interval, I'm going to use my union symbol. That means, all right, it's a union symbol. And it means my solution is either going to be in this interval here or this interval here. Okay, so note the difference between these two compound inequalities. I'm saying that, hey, my solution can lie in either of these when I have an or type of inequality. I call these types of inequalities an and 
it has to satisfy both of these inequalities or be between here. Okay, so notate those two differences in these compound inequalities. These compound inequalities are useful when we start talking about absolute value inequalities, which we'll do in our next video.